Okay, so we are going to go ahead and begin part two. Robert, did you have anything you want to start with right now that you want to say? This is probably the most important table uh, we have. It's going to uh, give people an idea of how to grow and toolboxes and people and resources. So uh, this is huge. Just getting somebody like John Ager to say he wants to cover his mountain in Golden Seal gives me goosebumps. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got our growers table, table two. And this uh, table is populated by our experts, of course, Robert Idis of Eagle Feather Farm and Margaret Blomquist, NC Beginning Forest Farming, Paul Strauss, Equinox Botanicals, Katie Commander of Appalachian Sustainable Development, and of course, Joe Hollis of Mountain Gardens and Herbs that we love so much. And this growers table will be addressing the questions, what incentives are needed to up the production of forest grown golden seal and looking into some action plans with toolboxes to help begin upping the production of golden seal. Table two. Okay, I would uh, actually like uh, to hear Paul Strauss start off. Uh, He has inspired me in so many ways. And uh, one of the things that we talked about that he, I would love for him to talk more about is a very delicate area of seeds versus rhizomes. I have been doing rhizomes for many, many years and have tried unsuccessfully to do seeds. Now, Janine Davis is here and she can talk about her first experiment with golden seal seed, which was a disaster. And, but Paul seems to have- I take issue with that. I love Janine. <laughs> Go ahead, Janine. <laughs> Go ahead. We'll, we'll talk more about the research later. <laughs> okay. So uh, if Paul could come on and, and explain some of the things for, to the people, uh, I, I would uh, be thrilled to hear more about growing from seed. Am I on now? Yeah, you are. I'm looking at a lot of faces here. I'm not used to this, uh, being in front of a computer like this, but I can give you some of my experiences. When I first walked into Hydrastis Heaven, it floored me. I was a 20-year-old kid, basically, and it was the fall of the year, and the ginseng was just starting to seed out. And uh, I went back four or five days later, and what I saw is green and red seeds were totally gone. So um, we were able to get some seeds from someone who's growing beds in Massillon, Ohio, and got a lot of that and started in a beautiful greenhouse here. And uh, of course, if you've seen the seeds of the plant, they look very differently than the leaf of the plant, what it turns out to be. And they're very beautiful when they're grown together. And we set it all out in a very fertile area and it did just wonderfully. At one point, I um, had, was giving master's thesis on the farm, and we had a real interesting one. A lady whose um, husband makes trail cams was interested in finding out what species predated or ate the seeds of red bearing seed plants like golden seal, ginseng, jack in the pulpit. And what she recorded on the camera was. As the teen seeds were going from green to red, two days later, the turkeys were in. Two days later, there were no seeds, which is exactly one of the reasons there's so much golden seal in this property here, United Plant Sales. What we're thinking of doing now is taking a bunch of floating row cover and is not letting the turkey get it all but harvesting some of our own seeds under the row cover and putting that on this farm. It seems to do very well on this farm. It's really fertile soil. One thing I found out about golden seal that's different than ginseng, ginseng should never have much fertilizer put on it. It Lowers the value of it. Unlike golden seal, which the hydrastocene and berberine content is not hurt at all by fertilization. As a matter of fact, with a good composted soil, the roots are significantly two to three times bigger than the roots in crowded zones like here at Hydrastis Heaven. 
they tend to stay small because there are tens of thousands in a small area using the same fertilizer load. But if you take a good compost and use that on a bed you've planted, you're gonna make a lot more money, a lot more can be put out there and you haven't hurt the product at all. It's a much more beautiful product. So that has helped us out a lot here. And I've taken both seeds and cuttings and used that infertile soil and the roots are significantly bigger without that much work, really. So that's one of the main reasons to do this fertilizer helps. Uh, right. I, I remember uh, uh, when Frontier uh, owned the land uh, next to you and they were doing the trials uh, with Tim. And one of the right. things, and one of the things that was shown was those beds that were aerated, that had the uh, not the tight soil that Jensen likes, but in more aerated soil, you'll get bigger roots with the golden seal. And on top of aeration is fertilization. And if you put the two combinations together the roots really start uh, uh, make, uh, making nice big roots for use for medicine. And the plants themselves are all bigger. The seeds right. are bigger, the roots are bigger, everything's bigger about them yet, since I'm a medicinal botanist and use the product in the products we make, it doesn't hurt the product at all having a larger, healthier root. Another way I've been able to work with local farmers around here who know golden seal. It's been used in this area for a long time. Mostly the people known as a gargle for sore throats. That's what most people know about its usage. But uh, you could go to farmers around here who also have big woodlots and simply make a trade for them of uh, planting golden seal on their land and maybe the trade would be that you bring and introduce ramps to their land and you'd have access to many farmers around here who would love to have that on their soil. We personally don't need that because we live in a community of probably about 3,000 acres now of like-minded people. We're all planting golden seal right now. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it's really huge. The other thing that I'd like to talk about is Dr. Davis and uh, her documents uh, for the beginning of a toolbox for our growers. Uh, I've, I've held on to that uh, document from 1996 or seven uh, that Janine has put together and it is excellent on Golden Seal. Uh, actually, I think it, it predated some of the stuff in her book. And uh, so I'd like, uh, I'd like her to, to mention that and see if some of that information can be gotten together uh, for the universities uh, to put a toolbox together or, or the herb uh, uh, schools to, to, to work on something like that for us. Uh, Robert, that'd be really easy to do. And that's something that we could, a group of us that are on this uh, call right now could do as part of the Appalachian Beginning Forest Farmer Coalition to just put together a whole package on Golden Seal. And if you would share with me that particular document that you're talking about, um, I just recently updated our little horticulture information leaflet on Golden Seal, but it sounds like you're talking about something else. So I'd like to see which one you're referring to, but we'd be happy to do that. Great, great. Cause that's part of the action plan that we're, mm -hmm. we're trying to get to. And I'd love to add some videos to that too. Yes, once we uh, get the websites going uh, and the links going, we will have that ability. Yes, absolutely. Katie, how are you uh, uh, responding to this? I think from the Appalachian Harvest Herb Pub perspective, one of the things that we're trying to do is work with as many forest farmers as possible to get them growing golden seal. Um, but there's a lot of challenges with that. I think the, the biggest issue that people are facing right now is that there's just not enough planting stock available. Um, a lot of the planting stock from nurseries that we know of locally here are selling um, golden seal in little three, four inch pots. But if you're trying to establish a farm and you're buying in little pots, it, it's way, way too expensive to do it that way. 
Um, and so we're trying, we have a, a grant right now through the Virginia Department of Ag and Consumer Services, their specialty crop block grant um, to basically give mini grants to nurseries in the state of Virginia. And this could potentially be a model for other states to look at where we're trying to encourage nurseries in Virginia to um, start to grow larger quantities of golden seal planting stock uh, in bulk wholesale quantities to help forest farmers with establishment. Um, I see Sean smiling too. I think they're working on some plant and stock stuff and I'm sure other people are too, but I, I think that's a big uh, bur burden and hurdle that forest farmers really need to overcome and something that collaboratively I'd like to, for us to identify some solutions on. Great. I was laughing at something else entirely, but um, what, what I wanted to chime in there is specifically what there's a shortage of is, is golden seal seed, because if, if you're gonna plant it on, large volume, um, not only can you not afford to be buying potted plants, we really can't afford to be buying rhizomes either if we're gonna talk about acreage basis of golden seal and it's just not out there um, in, in any quantity, you know. Well, I think that, yeah, I think I have the, the reason for that, Sean. Most of the uh, golden seal uh, growers that I know uh, plant the day they harvest. Keeping the seed active and alive is very tricky. Little black seeds like to dry out real easy. And so most of the people I know take their seeds and immediately start another place where they start their bed. And that's one of the reasons I've sold seed once um, to a university for, for work. And the believe it or not, the price that I was selling that seed for was ridiculous. It, 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 uh, they could only do their project with seed and not with rhizomes, but in some reality, uh, the, because there's no commercial seed market at all, uh, getting it is gonna cost you not a few bucks. It's, it, it was probably my most expensive seed deal I ever did all of it has to be overnight shipped. It all has to be refrigerated, otherwise they dry out real easy. And it's just a, a, a tough one. And I would love for your uh, college to figure out a way to uh, get it from sea to, uh, 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 to, to other people uh, without it drying out and being uh, useless. Well, that's what we're working on. At this point, we're just building up uh, a large enough population that we are generating enough seed we can sell at that volume, but we're close. With, we're within um, a couple of years of being able to do that. And seed is really where we're looking at going, simply because we can't get it. It's not available. You know, so we can figure out the logistics of how to get it shipped. It's, um, we've been able to, to propagate it fine um, from seed. Well, what are your uh, what are your techniques? Can you put that into a toolbox? Sure. Yeah. I mean, and and Dave, as 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 Dave Allen, as some of y'all know, are, is really the one who handles all that propagation. And so I, I can't go into the specifics other than I I know and can see you know in the shade house that he's he's doing very well with it. And then we're transplanting it to the forest from potted plants that have been grown in the shade house from seed and it's transplanting fine too. So we're getting it out into the forest um, from seed. We just haven't built up the populations large enough that we can start selling seed on volume, but that's where we're going with it. That way more people can get it out into the forest. Absolutely, and if that could go into the toolbox, that would be a real big one. Even if the people just take their seed from what we're, their own plants to replant. And Robert, that's exactly what we find works just fine. If you collect your own berries and plant your own seeds and do that all in good, in good time, it works just fine. The project that you were referring to before was we were trying to work for the seed companies to come up with a way for them to amass a bunch of seed and sell it to their customers. And that's where we found holding that seed in all those different methods really didn't work well. But for you, yourself, and growers, if they sow their own seed, they should get good germination. 
Good. Good. I, I, it's a learning curve for me. I'm still on rhizomes. Well, that's a good place to start, Robert. And what a lot of folks are doing is expanding vegetatively and then from there choosing the best seeds to expand out um, through all these efforts. Um, and I wanted to add one more uh, incentive or thing there is, of course, the price paid to these growers as they're putting stuff out to have incentives to put out seed to clear areas. Um, and to work on growing golden seal um, is the response from the consumers and the industry uh, to purchase that material um, after a number of years. Uh, another thing, which is further down the line, but of course is the succession and information there regarding planting and harvesting so we can keep a supply going once it's in the ground. Right, good. Okay. Um, you have not heard from Joe Hollis. Um, this is our forest farming table. I would like to ask Janine, when you are replanting the berries, you're not bothering to clean the seeds. You're just like crumbling up the berry into the ground. How are you actually doing? So you got a berry in your hand. What are you going to do? So we've done it both ways. And when we're doing research, we go through the normal method of extracting the seed and cleaning it up and putting it out. But it also works with the berry and just crushing the berry and scattering okay. those seeds. Well, it certainly save a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But in, in yeah. order to sell it, for you to be able to sell the seed, you know, that's where sure. we're running into the issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you want to do, I mean, maybe just, an approach to take would be for people to grow masses of little seedlings mm -hmm. just by crumbling up berries and not trying to sell seed. Right. Just fork up these bare root seedlings if you had big dense beds of them and market that conceivably. So, well, and I spoke or emailed with Jean Harrison of Red Root Natives the other day because she put out her wholesale plant list and she right. didn't have golden seal on there. So I emailed her and said, aren't you doing golden seal? And she's like, oh yes, but those flats of seedlings sell out so fast, she never gets them on her availability list. So we need to talk to Jean because she seems to be a pro with raising flats of these plants from seeds that other people yeah, have difficulty really with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Well, my method is just as I harvest to make tincture, I just break off the tip and plant it right back just out in the woods and take the rest of it home to tincture or sell, make whatever product I'm making. But, you know, I'm just super small scale. I mean, I, just, I don't know if you could scale that up or not. Okay. Thank you for your input. So, Lisa, it looks like we're close to it. Yes, we are doing great, and I really love the multidisciplinary approach as far as all of the different options and ways to plant and propagate golden seal, because it sounds like we need to head at it from every direction. So I think that's part of the toolbox would be all of the different ways to propagate and look at farming it. So that, that, that sounds so great. I love all these perspectives.